In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ, Glory Lord, 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 forever. forever. Many people, children perhaps, but maybe adults too, would say, well, the famous parable of the Pharisee, the religious person, and the tax collector, is that really the religious person thinks that he does good, that he is good, that he's fine, but in fact he's not good. But the tax collector thinks that he is bad and a sinner, but really he isn't. But that is not the point of the parable, is it? And in fact, I took the liberty, God forgive me, to read a verse and a half before the official reading where it starts. In fact, it's interesting to, to read all of Luke 18. And in fact, to read all of St. Luke, it's just a wonderful, wonderful gospel. Everything really fits. In chapter 18, it begins like this. Then, Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. That's a wonderful beginning for the chapter. And uh, it finishes when um, the Lord says, after this parable, will not the Lord come to help those who call upon his name in distress? And he says, however, will the Son of Man really find faith upon the earth when he returns? Always a puzzling question to think about. But then he explains the point of the parable. It says, to some who were confident in their righteousness and looked down on everybody else, there's two parts to that disease, Jesus told this parable. I love to look at uh, my Bible works. I've been uh, trying to sell this product for many years. I, I hope some of you have it by now. There's some other uh, Bible you can use on your computer. It's a joy. And you can look at this verse, and you can look at you know, 10 translations in any language. You can you know, look at the words in Greek, and you can really get into the joy of the Word of God. Another way to say this verse is to, to some who had convinced themselves, I think it's a better term, they had convinced themselves that they were righteous. And that term is, uh, I wrote it wrong. <laughs> so, dekaios. Dekaios. Now, it's, it's, we need to know this because at the very end of the parable, the Lord says, one, went home really righteous. Justified means he in fact was declared righteous by God. So one thought he was, but went home in fact not being righteous for the one who matters, which is God. Though it seems that he really wanted to, to be righteous for himself and explain to God that he was righteous. But the other one, who in fact is a sinner, goes home justified declared righteous by God because he really has an encounter with God. Is the religious person, the Pharisee, lying? I don't think he's lying. I mean, he's not, uh, you could say, an extortioner, like a tax collector in a roundabout way is. He probably isn't an adulterer. He probably really fasts and he really gives. And he really prays. So it's not about the Pharisee who really thinks he's good, but really isn't. In fact, he really isn't he's rotten. And the tax collector who thinks he's a sinner, but really, in fact, he's quite good compared to others. It's not about that. What is it about? Well, it's about having a real encounter with God the Holy God, and in that encounter, to have our illusions and delusions and our pride, as for so little. And in that encounter, we really realize
realize that God is holy, that all of us has fallen short of the glory of God. There's the verse in St. James that in many ways, I think, shines light on this. St. James says, to paraphrase, that all of us have sinned in some way, big or small, often, not so often. And if we have done that, we have broken the whole law. So all of us stand in the presence of a truly holy God. And unless we are in this delusion of trusting in our own selves, and unless we somehow find a perverse joy in looking down on others, then we say, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. And that is truth. That is a true statement. In this, uh, on this Sunday, I think a theme that the church wants to, to instill in us, because it's also in St. Paul, is the risk of delusion. Delusion, as you know, is what, is what happens often to other people. It's a common disease in other people. We happen to be almost immune from it, which is very nice. <laughs> Delusion is a great theme in, in the spiritual life. You know, the, the Greeks have a word for it, plani, which they use a lot. The Russians have prelest. It's the theme that we are all in danger of being deluded. St. Paul says that there are those who delude themselves, or deceive themselves, but also deceive others. So, the parable isn't about us looking at the deluded in other people. You know, all those other groups out there, they're really deluded. The parable is for us to face God, and to wonder truly if we, if we trust in our own righteousness. If we really maybe sometimes look down on others and say, I'm glad I'm not like those, those, those street people that are really correct. Thank God that, that you know, I'm, I'm a Christian, that I, I do those things, that I'm this and that. But in the encounter that must happen between us and God, it's really something that needs to happen often and more and more intensely. We see ourselves, ourselves as we really are. Than what the Spirit does. And then we can be justified. Now that's a theme that we Orthodox don't really love very much. Because we think, and maybe it's true a little bit, well, it's been kind of hijacked and been twisted by other Christians, so we'll just stay away from it. But that's not the right reaction, is it? Some people have said, I remember being in seminary, and uh, we were uh, learning how to, to preach, we're still learning, and uh, a typical moment was when one of the students said, oh, uh, you know, uh, uh, other Christians teach so much the cross, the atonement, well, we won't do it, we'll just talk about the resurrection. <clears throat> That's wrong. That's wrong. We do desire to be embraced and loved by God. We do desire to be declared righteous by God. We do desire that. We desire, in fact, like the Pharisee, to obey, to tithe, to fast, to not be adulterers and extortion. We desire those things. We need to do those things. But we can't believe that we will be able to stand, judge others, and claim claim righteousness from God. So it's, it's a parable that, that is uh, it's amazing because it's, it's meant to make us think year after year after year. But the church really wants us to think about it. <coughs> we don't really want to become um, you know, extortioners and sinners. But we do want to encounter the true and living God. We do want to to do the obedience things of the Pharisee, but we don't want to trust in ourselves that we are righteous and to look down on others. It's a profound parable. And we need to 
to repent in this season. Now I'm going to talk about repentance under every angle because it's such a it's, 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 the gospel is repent. Saint John the Baptist began uh, foreshadowing the Savior and said, Repent. But then the Savior came and he still said, Repent. And then when people came and said to Jesus, Well, you know, life is kind of strange, and there's these people that were doing the sacrifice and they were killed, and the tower fell upon them, and, and, and all these wicked things happened. And then the Lord says, Unless you repent, you likewise will perish. It's, it's a difficult teaching to repent in some ways. You know, metanoia means you know, beyond the thoughts. It, it really means to see through beyond our own thoughts. We often think that only the Buddhists, you know, uh, look at their thoughts like clouds and try to, to control them, but we too, we too need to look at our thoughts coming often from from the needs of the body. I remember our poster from the festival. It says on, on, on the poster, eat more heroes. I think the body is saying, you know, eat more, sleep more, enjoy life more, take more care of your comfort, think more of yourself. And all of these clouds come and, and they try to pollute the mind. I think of the mind, I often, you know, when we stand here, you know, we have this vivid image in this temple of, of who we are. I think of the mind as being, in a way, like, like the gate, like these gates. And either the mind lets these, these, these thoughts come into, into our holy place, or the gates will, will, will stop that. We need to stop the delusions from, from the mind. That's how it's I and me and, and judging others and finding comfort that we're different. It's a season when, in fact, we should think about it, uh, go to the temple and pray. It's a season when we should, in fact, uh, try to tithe and fast and pray. So we should, in some ways, look at at this Pharisee and us not judge him. And we should look at the tax collector as another part of us, as what we need to be, and come and try to, to grow our repentance. I put a resolution for us in the bulletin to try to mark for us in our schedule the first week of Lent. Because we have three services, it could be more, by the way. They could be longer, but they are what they are. The great kind of the of Crete is trying to produce in us a sense of repentance. To create it in the body, right? In the body, you know, bow down and stand up. Bow down and stand up. Thinking about all of the, the, the people in the Old Testament. Some of them were worse than them, to say, but I, and you, my soul, have in fact done the worst things. You are the one who needs to repent. And you are the one who seeks a Savior, the only one who can declare to be righteous by grace and by mercy. The Gospel, in many ways, is that no one can boast. I to summarize, St. Paul, in three words, is... In Christ, all of us, that no one may boast. And he ends by saying the beautiful words, Galatians 6, 14, And as for me, we can all say these words, As for me, let it not be to glory or to boast in anything, except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. Through which, to me, the world has been crucified. I have been crucified to the world. To our Savior, who has mercy upon us, who is good upon us, who calls us to repentance, be the glory of the Father and the Spirit, always, now, and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Glory forever.